little bit about me, the explanatory page. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm Jaime Lopez Jr. I used to be the iOS lead over at OfferUp, a startup in Seattle. Now I'm an iOS engineer at Simple, which is an online bank headquartered in Portland. I work remotely from my wonderful home in the Seattle area. You can find me on Twitter as at the dev with the hair, and you can also find my stuff and this content uh, when I get around to it uh, on uh, GitHub. Same thing, dev with the hair. And something else you should know about me is uh, I'm lazy. So I write tests. And I see a lot of confused looks around. Because those are things that I think people think, well, that doesn't go together. That doesn't make sense at all. And it's probably because you're thinking about something like TDD. So test-driven development, right? It's a very disciplined sort of thing where you create a test that encapsulates the behavior. Create a, yeah, there you go. You create a test that encapsulates the behavior that you want. And then you write just enough code to satisfy that behavior. And then you refactor your code to make it cleaner and easier to understand, more maintainable. Whatever abilities you need on there. OK, can you hear me? All right, so TDD, write a test, write some code to pass that test, and then you're also going to make sure that you <laughs> <laughs> Pardon the technical difficulties. Okay, you can hear me. That's great. That's fantastic. You know what TDD is? I just explained it three times. So, <laughs> uh, I think a problem that many of you, if you're out there as dev leads, have run into is it's not always the sort of thing that your dev team or your stakeholders will be into because it's quite a radical change in a lot of cases. So let's talk a little bit about those obstacles, or at least the ones that I've encountered when I've dealt with different environments. I think the first one itself is uh, the dev team itself. And things I hear are, it's too time consuming. I barely have enough time to write the code they want me to do. Now you want me to write more code? That doesn't add up. Uh, test code isn't production code. Uh, with the intention there, or the implications, like, it's not real code, right? Like, I only write real code that goes into users' hands. And by the way, we're behind schedules. So I don't have time to learn any of this stuff. It's a waste of my time. Get away from me. So then I talked to the stakeholders. And what do I run into? It's too time consuming. I've already got my engineers working themselves to the bone, so how am I going to pay for them to work themselves like through the bone? Oh, and test code isn't production code, and I really don't want to pay for code that isn't going to go into my users' hands? Oh, and we're behind schedule, so we don't have time to do this. We don't have time to change the way we're doing things, even though we're behind schedule. So what do we do? Do we say TDD? Forget it. Give it up. Go on LinkedIn change my online profile and say, well, I guess I'm looking for a new job and find a TDD shop? I say no. I say, what if you'd use TBD or test-backed development, where the whole idea is, let's do just enough of those kinds of tests that many of us will find really helpful and really high return on investment. And if you don't know, for TBD, uh, a legitimate answer to the question of, well, where's your test is, well, that's TBD. <laughs> Uh, let me make this a little bit more r realistic with some examples. So I think one thing that I've really run into is a really good way to get people involved with this is how many of us have seen developers or have been the developer who does this where you, know, you need to make some sort of API call, so you wire up a button in your application, you write the networking code, and then you mash the button, and the response comes back from the server and it's like, whoops, turns out that was supposed to be an integer, not a float. Uh, so you make code changes, and you run it through the entire cycle. And this just, as you can tell, wastes many and many cycles through your time. So when I see some people doing this, I say, well, crazy idea. What if you were to write a test that could call that code so you didn't have to run it all the way through and navigate to the right spot in your web application, your mobile application? You can just hit a keyboard shortcut, see if it's correct or not. And then once I get them keyed into that idea, I say, well, what if you could fake that API call? So even if the API isn't ready to roll, like maybe the backend provider hasn't provided it, or maybe you're like me, and you flew on an airplane that didn't have Wi-Fi for who knows what reason, and uh, you'd still like to be productive and get your coding done even while you're en route to a conference such as uh, the Lead Dev Austin. 
And then another one that, that tends to get people interested is smoke tests. So I've worked in startup environments where we did not have software developer engineers and tests. We did not have QA analysts. So if you wrote a bit of code and you wanted to see it live in production and make sure everything wasn't actively on fire, guess what? You were spending the next 10 to 15 minutes running mindlessly through a whole bunch of these different scenarios. And no developer I've ever met, especially in any startup environment, in actually like, enjoyed that. So I say, well, what if you wrote an automated test that could go through and check all the things. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to check everything. I'm not, I'm not saying to be fanatical about it. You know, just, just check the major things that would make us say, holy smokes, I guess we're having a bad time this weekend, you know, making sure that production is ready again. And another thing that I like to do is say, well, how about we demonstrate how something works? You have a lot of questions about how this particular component that's been written, maybe I've written it, maybe I've written something just prior to going on vacation or perhaps prior to coming to a random particular conference. And I want to explain to my colleagues how this thing can be initialized, configured, and actually used. Or sometimes, because I have sort of like, you know, limited memory, I might actually forget how something works. Like let's say our deep link navigational routing mechanism and exactly how that works under various scenarios. Instead of like, you know, writing extensive documentation instead of just kind of randomly trying to remember every little aspect of our system, uh, I could just go look at the test and say, ah, there you go. That's what it does when the parameter is X, Y, Z. And what are the results here? Well, I've seen happier dev teams who say, oh man, you can save time? Yeah, sign me up for that. Oh, uh, is this easier because I don't have to worry about my dependencies? I don't have to worry about the third-party API provider. I don't have to worry about my uh, own internal backend API team actually having stuff up and running. I could still be productive. And with things like these smoke tests, I can have you know, more time to like go make an avocado toast sandwich or something instead of running smoke tests. And then, I also have happier stakeholders. They say, oh, my developers seem like they're more productive. And I've noticed that the bug counts have gone down. Uh, what's going on there? I, I love it. I don't really care why, but I love this thing. And what I want to leave you with is, you know, I said at the beginning that I'm lazy. And I don't know if that's quite the appropriate term, actually, when I start to rethink about it and I think about how this works in the context of a lot of the talks I've heard here. Um, that's not really so much that I'm lazy. It's like, I'm busy, so I write tests. Thank you. Thank you.